<laughs> now, the Eagles this year, five years after they won it, yeah. with a dramatically different team, some familiar names, yeah. but different quarterback, different coach. And Howie Re Roseman, just the, the ultimate survivor, he was exiled by Chip Kelly in 2013, mm. sent out of the building, just not even relevant to the football operation, got back in after Kelly was fired, and has really, really established himself as one of the top GMs in the league. And another example of just a guy who knows who to get, yeah. how to plug them in, and Oof. it's a combination of front office and coaching staff, because the coaches then take those guys and turn them into players who contribute. But they've got an incredibly talented roster. And there was something last week about Jerry Jones saying that they, the Eagles went all in this year. They didn't oh, go all in. They've set, they've set themselves up to be high-end contenders here. for years to come. Right, right. This wasn't a, like, oh, we're just going to throw. It wasn't like, you know, $100 million in free agency and stuff. There, a lot of these pieces were in place. They just, you know, the phrase I always used to like to, say, uh, like to say is they just got some sizzle on their team. They got some guys where it's like, okay, we can't always call the perfect play. So, you know, every now and then we just want to throw it up to A.J. Brown and he'll catch it and make a touchdown. Or we'll throw a five-yard screen to him and he'll run for 70. You know, they got those kind of guys on the team. That's where they went to the next level here. You know, it's funny that we yeah. got two teams in the Super Bowl. One was the team yeah. that traded away the great receiver right. and took the picks. And the other is the team that said, we're going to go get the great receiver and even though they did it it wasn't reckless and it wasn't a culture it, it wasn't f sense. them picks it right. was one move right and they got the guy at a good value and he's close friends with your quarterback and it adds to the camaraderie that they have in right. philadelphia right. it was more surgical with the rams it just felt like yeah. scorched earth f them picks right with the eagles it was like where are we what do we have what can we do how do we get better we have an opportunity let's get this guy and it's going to make us better I, that's how i'm with you there mike i feel the same way there theirs was more like hey we're a super bowl team but we're like if we get A.J. Brown, we're a really dangerous Super Bowl team. Like, we, you, they went from Super Bowl conversation to most of us putting them in the Super Bowl game or at least the NFC Championship when they got A.J. Brown. You know, I think that's, that's the big thing. And he was the missing part to their formula that worked, but they, the way they're running their offense, where, yeah, the, Mahomes and Kansas City, they didn't need Tyreek. They didn't with this offense. You know, the running the football – and how good they are in that department, I think they looked at it and said, wait, teams are going to play us in these run defenses, and if we just get a guy that's a difference maker outside, we're almost going to be you know, indefensible that way. And that's where, you know, listen, I could sit here and argue, and I know people won't probably love this comment, A.J. Brown, to me, would every bit be the MVP of the Eagles' offense as much as Jalen Hurts. I mean, he's phenomenal for what he's done to their football team. But that was a big-time move, to your point, by Howie Roseman. And their team as a whole, it, it just – it's, it's about as perfectly constructed of a team as I can remember, really, from top to bottom. There's really not one glaring weakness on their team that we look at. I think running back's the only place I go, well, they're not like blue chippers there. But everywhere else, I feel like, wow. But they're whoa, good enough. They're Interchangeable good enough. parts. Right. Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell. Gainwell great. Boston, Boston Scott. Scott right. when, when needed, yeah. they do what needs to be done. Right. Hassan Reddick was a great signing. Oh, another by, one. By Harry Roseman. Sizzle. Three straight years of double-digit sacks with three different teams. It's Unbelievable right. when you think about it. Right. And, and he was available to anybody who wanted him. And we know how important that position is. We're often reminded during the Super Bowl of how important pass rusher is because usually a Super Bowl, not usually, but when we, we have that realization, it was Denver in Super Bowl 50. It was the Buccaneers a couple of years ago. Oh, boy, if you have a really great pass rush, you're kind of hard to beat in the Super Bowl. Right. You get there and you'll win it with a great pass rush, and that's what the Eagles have. That's my my big concern for the Chiefs. Yeah. If, if Patrick Mahomes gets overwhelmed by the interchangeable parts that they have up front right. and he can't get away and he can't buy time, yep. that you know a, a mistake forced here or there could right. be enough to open it up for the Eagles. I, I, I'm, I'm and Reddick's there. a big part of that. We saw what Reddick did. Right. He destroyed the 49ers right. in the NFC Championship by – by applying a clean legal hit that knocked out their starting quarterback. Yeah, exactly right. No, I, I, I mean to me, it's, it's, that's that's the key to the game. You know, I mean, if we get up there and we're getting into the fourth quarter and we go, oh man, the Eagles got five sacks. I'm gonna sit here and go, well, then they're, then the Eagles are probably gonna win the Super Bowl. But if it's at two or three in the third fourth quarter, I go, well, then Mahomes has had time and. You know, they're picking them apart, and they got a plan to get the ball out of the hand quickly, and they're running the ball a little bit, and I would say that's trouble.
but it's a, certainly one of the big aspects of the game. Another thing that, again, I think was kind of undervalued here is just that, the, you know, we hit on it last week before the NFC Championship game, is that, you know, the Eagles have a chance to break the 85 Bears sack record in this football game. That's insane. But I'll say this, Mike. I have never seen Andy Reid get exposed by the blitz or being like, oh, no, we don't know how to block a five-man front or a great pass rush football team, let alone they have the studs to do it. And then I think the other thing, that's why this matchup is intriguing, where I said the Eagles are better in totality, but not by so much then. And, and the magic man up here on the poster here wearing one five, blitz? <laughs> he loves blitz. He loves pressure. You want to rush five all game long against me and have one less guy in throwing lanes? Sure, no problem. He'll raise his hand for that, I think. So that's the other intriguing part of the, the matchup because the Eagles have been killing teams with these five-man rushes in their pass rush. And now here we are at the team where I go, eh, I don't know if they can kill this team that way. And that's, you know, again, adds to the intrigue of the game and why I can't wait for Sunday. It was two years ago we saw the Buccaneers get after Mahomes with four right. because he had the turf Nothing. toe and he lost just enough of his edge where they could track him down. And he tried and both valiantly. tackles in the some AFC the, Championship Some game. of the best throws we've ever seen that were incomplete. Insane. From him running around in that game and trying his best to just will the the, the Chiefs back into contention. But, and but had some drops, right? And Yes, absolutely. Like, where like, we were like, well, they, they caught, got a face. Even though they were getting outplayed, this game was going to get tight here. And their offensive line wasn't nearly as good right. as it is now. No. They, they, hey, they had a weakness and they addressed it. That's yeah. part of the reality of building a team that is a year-in and year-out contender. Yeah. If you have a weakness, you find a way to devote resources to making it better. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.